Welcome, everybody. Today we have Andreas Jackson here doing his capstone presentation. The name of his capstone is Just Turn It On, African Americans and Technology Adoption. So, Andreas, I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Jerry, I'd like to thank you for all your help and insight and <clears throat> completing this project, helping me to complete it and uh, making it possible. And I would like to thank everybody who might be looking at this presentation as well um, and taking the time to um, engage and hopefully uh, learn something or take something away from it. So um, I guess I'll go into uh, a brief explanation of what this project is and, and really kind of how it relates to myself. So I'll go over actually, hopefully this will show up on a screen share. It does just fine. Okay, so here's a quote and actually this quote um, really was kind of like inspired me to really kind of go uh, down this route as far as my uh, capstone project. And the quote reads, as you can see, one of the largest and most prominent debates in social science is the role of technology and inequality. And that quote was made by David Brusky, who was the director of Stanford Center on Poverty and Inequality. And, you know, since I've been in fielding, um, a topic that's been very close to my heart or a passion um, subject of mine has been uh, historically the digital divide which um, could be loosely described as the gap between uh, people who can effectively use information and communication technology and those who cannot. And historically, the digital divide, a lot of conversations or discussions talked a lot about accessibility um, as well as, you know, barriers of, of access um, economically. Um, you know, to adopting technology. And, you know, I think over time with the proliferation of different forms of technology, like mobile, for example, um, as it relates to kind of underserved populations or, mod or marginal, or, excuse me, marginalized populations um, within the United States and technology adoption, you know, I think the discussion of accessibility uh, for technology, you know, is a little bit antiquated. And I actually wanted to explore and kind of go down a whole other realm. And just to really give a little more insight into that, uh, David Brusky, uh, what he was really kind of talking about, where he was getting at with his quote was education. And uh, his kind of argument was that um, because of lack of quality education or, you know, the inequities of education within groups within the United States, that um, it ultimately leads to economic inequality. So that's really kind of where I wanted to approach this project was to kind of discuss uh, technology's role in inequality, um, particularly as it relates to African Americans. Um, it is, uh, that's a personal topic with myself being African American and seeing the experience of what people in my community uh, pretty much go through. So um, I guess I'll uh, keep going. Um, just to put it, you know, frame it in a little more perspective, uh, this is a quote or actually a statistic from the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, black unemployment rates during uh, the recession, and this is speaking to the recession of 2007, um, was larger than that for other races, partly because workers with less education are particularly hard hit during recessions. So I guess that was a lot of words, but to kind of sum it up, what I really wanted to do is look at, um, uh, take a snapshot of the state of, you know, African Americans in the economy going from the 2000 recession through the current recovery and really kind of, you know, look at um, the inequities based off of lack of, of education as it relates to adopting technology and high base skills. And, you know, just to kind of throw out, you know, another statistic, um, the U.S. Department of Labor basically projects that in the next 10 years, um, actually from 2010 to 2020, that uh, the technology and scientific fields will increase 3% um, every year as far as growth rate. And African Americans are projected to be 16% of that um, 
of that workforce. So, you know, I wanted to create something, um, some type of tool or some type of resource that could hopefully help <clears throat> or contribute in filling the gap, uh, filling that gap of um, technology and skill-based adoption with African Americans, and hopefully that would help to mitigate um, some of the, you know, income inequality that um, that you know certain departments like the U.S. Department of Labor um, has expressed to put out there. And these are just a few more statistics. National unemployment rate for uh, white Americans is about 4.6. For Hispanics, it's 6.5. And for blacks, it's 9.1. That's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And just to put that in perspective, um, and this is national unemployment rates, as this um, chart shows. And at the peak of you know the 2000 recession, the, un the national unemployment rate was actually 10%. And that was across all races. So basically, um, as far as the unemployment rate for blacks and African Americans, it really hasn't changed too much from that peak, um, 10% uh, during the actual recession, which we are currently in the recovery phase. So, um, so that's a little kind of backdrop in, I guess, my hypothesis as far as why I wanted to uh, create this, this site. And once again, I, I decided to go with a web-based learning environment because I wanted to create something that had um, the most accessibility possible and then also something where that could hopefully achieve uh, enough level of awareness amongst uh, all the various and diverse populations and communities, um, you know, amongst African Americans and really, you know, really try to attain as much reach and awareness as possible as well as accessibility and I felt that a web-based environment, learning environment would be the best way to do that. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, um, typically with the digital divide, uh, discussions often re revolved around like more about economic cost or accessibility. And what I wanted to do is, in order to make this web-based learning environment, I wanted to look more into cultural differences um, amongst African Americans, the technology adoption. And you know, I came across research previously in my experience in fielding, where you know there was certain research that identified um, different uh, non-cost psychosocial barriers that undermine um, the adoption of of computer or technology skills um, amongst underserved populations, including African Americans. And those three, just to give an example, um, three of those psychosocial barriers identified included fear, um, also included self-efficacy, and also included relevancy. So um, my project basically is a qualitative study um, based off in-depth interviews uh, with a small sample size of African Americans primarily in the North Jersey based region and uh, it spanned it across different age groups so it went from teenagers to uh, 59, 60 senior citizens and it also ranged across different economical, socioeconomical statuses but the one common trait was that nobody had a college education so that was really kind of the common denominator. I wanted to talk to a population that um, ca had capped off on a certain level of educational attainment. So based off of these in-depth interviews, um, you know, in addition to um, other, you know, research based off of social learning perspectives, which I'll get into, as well as um, certain design principles that I also came across through research, I decided to design this web-based learning system, uh, excuse me, web-based learning environment. So I will go through uh, as much as possible. This is really kind of a beta site. Um, it's a website with a complete learning management system, LMS, built inside of it, meaning that it's capable of uh, creating and executing um, uh, web-based courses. So uh, that's really kind of the back end of this website. But from a design standpoint, what I really wanted to do was, you know, focusing on some of the research that I got from my in-depth interviews, I wanted to ensure that I made a design based off of the feedback that I got. 
And one of the, the important things that I learned from my interviews was that a lot of participants was really interested in information seeking. So, um, you know, even though I wanted to make a web-based learning environment, I thought it was important um, to make an impression, you know, with these res uh, with these respondents or targeted users to create something that really kind of reflected that need for information seeking. So, when you look at this home screen, for example. Uh, um, I really wanted to design it to be to, to function like a search engine, similar to a Google or even a YouTube, where somebody kind of go, they, you know, they go to the home screen, they see the search field right away. Um, you can look and see the lettering. Uh, excuse me, search for training videos by subject, and even with uh, some wording here, stay up to date and make life easier helpful training and information at your fingertips. So this is really, and this kind of goes with certain design principles which I was able to find through the U.S. Department of Health actually who publishes a whole set of uh, grounded design principles for the public sector. And one of the things that they mentioned was that you know your home page should be um, to make a positive first impression, should communicate value and purpose, and show all major options. And the major option in this sense is the ability for people to go and find resources and find training for various subjects that they feel they may need to level up on. And here's a big hero image, um, also as you can see. And you know, I thought that was important um, as far as. Um, you know, as far as uh, first impression also. And I mentioned before um, those resistances that I mentioned, fear, self-concept, and uh, relevancy. Uh, self-concept meaning, um, just to get, get into a brief explanation, self-concept meaning that it's important for African Americans to see people like themselves, to see peers like themselves engage in technology adoption. And, you know, um, see that imagery which could, you know, help motivate them uh, more to and, and kind of undercut some of the fears that they have in order to develop technology. So um, that's why I wanted to have this, this hero image. Um, so kind of scrolling down, uh, we take a look at this is actually the learning management system part of the um, a part of the uh, website that I mentioned and this is really where social learning theory comes into play. So as I was doing research aside from my in-depth interviews, I, did, I discovered uh, that there was research that um, talked about applying social learning theories to web-based learning environments which was actually pretty interesting. And you know by utilizing social learning perspectives, you can actually design, develop, and implement um, web-based learning environments. And you know, just to really kind of delve, touch briefly on social learning theory, which has a lot to do with Bandura. Um, obviously, he was a pioneer as far as that you know type of research and um, that type of process, typically in face-to-face -face environments, but more and more. Um, people are finding reasons to learn, uh, excuse me, finding reasons to use social learning theory perspectives in uh, web-based environments. So, um, and, you know, with social learning theory, a lot of it, the point is um, to create knowledge or construct knowledge through different activities, through uh, feedback and also through human interact human interaction in a public environment, which goes back to the reason why I'm using a web-based learning environment once again. So um, once again, this is some messaging access to free video training professional experts and knowledgeable community, and that's pretty important because um, there are really three main attributes of uh, social learning theory and it, as it applies to a web-based learning environment. And number one is context. And context is really about having interactions, whether it's with content, whether it's with different instructors, or whether it's with different peers. So I wanted to have messaging that made it clear to people that by engaging in this training or you know learning process that not only will you have access to 
uh, different forms of media, but you will also have experts who can actually guide and help scaffold you, which is something, which is a point that I also found that out, that found was important through my um, in-depth uh, interviews. And then also knowledgeable community, uh, because interacting with other people, especially with peers and, you know, people in the public sphere is also uh, a big part of social learning as well as social mo modeling. So very quickly, um, these are just three examples of uh, the type of training courses that I would incorporate into possibly into the web-based learning environment. And these are all ideas that I got from my participants in my in-depth interviews. So how to shop for a new computer, for example, um, was an interest of some of the participants that I interviewed. And you know, one thing that was really interesting in the language that they used was they wanted to know, you know, step by step, like a lot of people spoke to a process of step by step going from A to Z on how to get from you know the beginning of a of a technology task to the end, and um, you know whether it's something simple like shopping for a computer, and that's really what you know I wanted to reflect within these courses, and also you can kind of see it in the messaging how to get from A to Z on technology and life skills. So how to shop for a new computer, um, how to find a job online. That was for, as far as information seeking. That was something that was very important for a lot of participants, and that also speaks to the relevancy that I talked about with the um, with the cycle social barriers. It's important to have um, content and subject matter that's very relevant um, for people. So once again, speaking going back to that economic inequality, finding a job um, was an important motivation. Um, for uh, the participants that I interviewed. And here I have Break It uh, Till You Make It, an intro to hacking. And uh, once again, this kind of speaks to especially some of the younger people who wanted to have a, a more hands-on approach to technology adoption as far as um, being able to not only interact with the technology, but to be able to build and design and take part in the uh, programming process. So. Just clicking on this really quickly, and hopefully it will load. There it goes. Uh, so here's a, a video example. I didn't actually produce this. Sorry, but uh, here's a video kind of uh, showing or um, just an example of the type of uh, material that people could possibly find on these uh, in these online courses. And here are some features um, of the course as well. And this kind of goes once again with you know the interaction um, component or element of the website, connecting and training with fellow peers, receiving badges of completion by leveling up and upgrading, and also sharing your progress on social media. So that's an example of the courses. And last thing on the home page, um, another thing that I found that was important through my um, interviews, my in-depth interviews, was relevant content. People like content and they like discovery and they like content, uh, interesting relevant content that opened them up or um, gave them new ideas on subjects that they were interested in. So these are just some examples of you know articles and you know different content pieces that people can interact with even if they didn't want to get involved with the learning or instructional aspect. And, and that was, once again, going back to a goal of mine was to create something that was very accessible um, and very inclusive as well. So for people who may not, you know, necessarily want to get involved in the learning process or the instructional process right away, they can still take something away from the website. And that, like, is a, an important goal of mine. So I'll just quickly go through some of these other um, items in the navigation ses uh, section. Uh, this is actually a video I produced um, earlier in my fielding experience and it's just kind of an explanation of um, the importance of technology adoption and also speaking to relevancy 
of technology adoption and how it can um, help in a variety of different factors. And I won't play the whole thing, but um, this is check it out if you <laughs> get the opportunity. Um, video training, once again, this is just another section showing the courses uh, that I spoke about earlier. Um, community, and um, just to call out, this is another important aspect of social learning perspectives as it relates to web based learning environments it is creating a culture and community. Um, for community building and as, as well as for collaborative activities. The collaborative activities um, were part of the video training process, but I also wanted to once again have something inclusive so that people can interact with um, and, and be able to connect with other people outside of themselves and, and fellow peers. Um, when they go to the website. So this is just an example. This is something out of social media and some of the young people um, in my interviews express an importance of social media. So this is actually uh, Black Twitter, which is a kind of micro community within the Twitter platform that has gained, um, I guess, prominence over the past uh, few years. Uh, so this is literally kind of an aggregation of different tweets and contents that you will be able to find on Black Twitter. And once again, is this is just really for discovery and creating content and creating ways for people to community build, um, you know, having cultural relevance and also having a level of authenticity um, when people interact with the website. Uh, here are some news. Items once again, this is something that you know I pointed out on the home page. Um, here's a resources page, and this once again um, speaks to the importance within social learning perspectives. Um, you know, having resources, particularly um, once again for um, context, as I mentioned earlier, context was one of those main attributes. Um, wanted to ensure that there were, and these are just some examples of resources that people can, inter can interact with once again, uh, Google as a computer science learning opportunities uh, program, um, Apple as a free workshop for kids to become filmmakers and General Assembly, which is a practical learning campus. They have an opportunity fund which can provide um, high skill based training for underrepresented groups. So this is all kind of part of the social learning um, process as well. And this is a contact page. Um, uh, this kind of speaks to motivation, uh, which is uh, actually another part, very important part of social learning that I did not touch upon was uh, individual learning characteristics. And that's very important. And the reason why I went with a visual based um, learning um, process for the website was the, uh, the information that I got from my respondents and I'll show you this chart real quick. Um, their learning styles definitely skewed towards um, your index for visual and that's an important part of social learning perspectives and web-based and web-based environments as well. Um, making sure you're speaking to individual learning styles. And you know, there are different learning styles as you can see like tactile and visual, um, excuse me, and audio. And those learning styles can be incorporated as well, like podcasts and um, even with some of the guided you know, training, uh, people can participate in more tactile based learning activities. But I just wanted to kind of point that out. Um, from the you know psychological component and I think <laughs> I kind of ran through and touched upon mostly what I wanted to say well you did a, a, a excellent tour of the um, of the website that you put together thank you so okay. much that was that was so well done um, <laughs> really enjoying all the different uh, pieces and parts that you put together uh, what I particularly like is how you let 
um, your research then inform your designs? For example, it, it sounds like that um, when you were interviewing people, that gave you further ideas mm -hmm. about the design. Is that true? Oh yeah, ab absolutely. And you know, and, and once again, especially with the home page, um, like if I did not interview people, my probably my vision would have been to create something like based off of what I'm familiar with, like different web-based learning environments, like a Skillshare or Coursera or a lot of the, or even a Khan Academy, a lot of the more popular web-based learning environments that, you know, uh, that people might be familiar with. But I really, like, this was definitely not the direction that I would have gone in or even thought about going in, was creating really something like a, a more of a search engine based design like that was something that very much came out of uh, my interviews well well done so uh, any surprises to you during the process um there there are a couple um actually i can kind of go to this quick graph um excuse me so one of my questions in my in my interviews, I did a question about trust and in information providers, which I thought was a very interesting question um, because I kind of wanted to know more about that. Um, you know, especially speaking you know, to deal with the whole fear aspect of the psychosocial barriers and who do people trust in African American community to get information from. So here's a quick chart of kind of the, the responses from that question. And what was very interesting to me was tech expert pretty much, I mean, they're all like pretty close, but tech expert um, was number one. And actually print newspapers came out as the second highest. And that I was very surprised about. You know, I, I would think that that would definitely kind of go more towards the bottom. And, I, you know, kind of an explanation for that is um, a lot of people actually still trusted and, and relied on print newspapers because it's kind of more community focused. And a lot of people I interviewed, um, there was definitely a value in community. Um, so my takeaway from that was when thinking about how reach, like even though I made a web-based learning environment, um, I think it's important that as far as outreach to use other tools and other, um, <clears throat> you know, other platforms. And I think print newspapers might be something to look into, particularly to reach um, certain uh, people with an African American population, just to raise awareness for whether it's something like this or, you know, anything else. So that was surprising. And actually friends and family came in uh, towards the bottom. <laughs> and that was actually pretty surprising also. I thought that would have been top. So that might speak to some of those psychosocial barriers as far as self-concept um, or even self-efficacy. And I think that, um, you know, from a design standpoint and thinking about the psychology that is very important to um, touch upon those subjects in your des in design and development if you're creating programs or initiatives for African Americans as it relates to technology adoption. So, so those are actually pretty surprising. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I think it's important that idea that you found the value of community and um, how that that was that was an important piece as well. Uh, you know, one idea I had, you have mm -hmm. a place on the website, several different places on the website for participants to actually post a comment. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. So oh, yes, yes. in the future, moving forward, what might be an interesting follow-up study is a content analysis of the posts that are made or some oh, yeah, type, oh, yeah. yes, right. So some type of, um, um, analysis of the different posts that are made. I mean, obviously it's brand new and to tell you the truth, I don't know if you are live yet or not, but that might be <laughs> an, an interesting, um, um, you know, point to, to look at. Um, so on that, and this will be my last question. Um, so along sure. those lines, where do you hope to take this? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so that's actually a very good question. So, you know, I've, 
the site is live, you know, number one, to kind of answer your question, just turn it on .com. I mean, it's technically live, so people can go and interact. And if people want to go to it and, and kind of give feedback, um, I, I think I have a content <laughs> page that should be functional. So definitely I would encourage any feedback. Um, but it is actually live, but the, but the courses aren't. So, and the reason why I didn't really flesh out the courses completely is because I would actually like to go through a similar process to specifically um, get feedback and map out the courses even more. So ultimately, you know, and as I mentioned earlier, like this is really a small pilot study. I mean, I had a small end as far as the people that I interview, but where I would like to kind of go with this ultimately um, like I would like to do a larger even quantitative study like I did a qualitative but I would like to do like a, a larger quantitative study um, of a larger population to get you know even more data and then actually use that data to do another qualitative study um, once again with a larger population perhaps even doing some ethnographies um, in addition to the end of interviews and doing it in like different areas. So really kind of a larger research based approach um, that's a little larger in scope. I would definitely love to do that. And then, um, you know, from a, like the site is pretty much beta or as they say in the startup world, it's kind of like an MVP, minimal viable product. So um, just for right now, I would love to create like a minimal viable product of a course and just have some people test drive it to see you know what they think and to your point um, get some feedback get some comments um, you know get some more um, data so you know like you said I can do like a content analysis and get more feedback that way um, from a usability standpoint 